get my hands on the man who wrote that dreadful song. Say, you don't suppose the stag would blow up, do you? No, but my nerves will, if you don't stop that confounded tootling. I guess I'm just excited, sir. I swear, if that girl came home every day, I'd get your brother to fire you. wonderful phrase I hit on? Are you loony? You can't put two notes in my ledger. Oh, she'll love this one. Oh. I guess I'll go home and take a nap. Stephen Foster? Here. Hey, look. It's from Howard. Gee whiz, I thought he forgot me. Say, that's dingy. Actually in print. Oh, look at those curly cues. Isn't that elegant? <laughs> Let's see where it says you wrote it. Well, uh, I guess it doesn't say. Did you get much for it? Oh, he didn't pay me anything. Didn't you even get any royalties? Listen, he's doing me a big favor just to print it. Didn't charge me a cent. Well, how about that minstrel man, Christy? Didn't he pay you? Certainly not. I'm proud to have him sing it. Gee, it looks like you ought to get a little something just for thinking it up. Now, look. These copies are worth 10 cents apiece. 50 of them. There's $5 right there, much as I make in a week. Yeah, and you'll need that kind of money if you're going to get that girl a ring. Well, I already saved up for that. Got $22 pinned right here in my vest. No. Took me most a year. Where's the flying stag? I'm coming in way down at the public land. Public? But I thought, oh, murderation, I'll never make it. You'll have to all gravel, Steve. I'm a fool. Oh, Susanna. Trade. Ain't no good, Mr. Steve. You gonna play this, Mr. Steve? Chitlins, I just don't have time right now. We have good if you play. <laughs> Look out, Chitlins! 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 Here, please help me get him up. Sack, run to his mammy. Tell her to get a doctor quick. I'm bringing him home. Well, I got his mouth burger, Mr. Steve. Look at my pocket. Mr. Steve. I left 
to get him to a hospital. But, Doctor, we ain't got hospital money. I've got $22 here, including three Dixie dollars. Will that do? If it won't, I'll make up the difference. I'll fetch an ambulance. Thank you, Mr. Steve. I ought to be thanking you, Hecuba. I learned nearly everything I know about music from you people. How's that? Music is for letting out of you the things that you feel but can't quite say. You taught me that. It's the only worthwhile thing I know. Great Scott. Inez, I've got to run. Ah, the late Mr. Foster. Oh, hello, Wilson. Did Inez have to wait at the dock very long? Long enough to be glad to see me. She must have been desperate. Don't tell me you're going in there. Why don't you just throw your hat in and duck? Inez! Inez? Inez! Oh, hello, Steve. Hello, Miss McDowell. Inez, Steve's here. What, dear? Jeannie, you talk to her. Well, Steve, how unprevious. Mrs. McDowell, is Inez all right? Of course she is. She brought you this present from your mother. She's fine and she sends you her love. She does? Your mother, I mean. Oh, yes. Did you have anything to eat? Oh, I'm not hungry, honestly. Now, look here, Steve. I promised your mother you would... <laughs> Jeannie! Hello, Steve. Hi, Jeannie. Where's your sister? Oh, the prima donna can't be disturbed. She's resting a spell. At least that's what I'm supposed to tell you. Is she very mad? Oh, Harper, but, but she'll get over it. And Ness just doesn't understand genius. Well, what did your mother send you? Isn't that nice? Knitted them herself. Useful, too. Especially in handling her ladyship. Well, I'll wait over in my room in case... Steve, will you do one thing for me? Will you please move into the house? Oh, I couldn't do that. How can I tell your mother where you're living? In the stable, literally in the stable. Now, you give me one good reason. Well, it's my flute. He virtually breathes through it, Ma. But we love to hear your flute. Look, Mrs. McDowell, you've been awfully kind to me, but in here I just wouldn't feel free to... Will you tell Inez for me that... Well, just tell her I feel awful. I'll tell her plenty. If she won't listen, I'll sing your song. <laughs> the morn of life is past, and evening comes at last. It brings me a dream of a once happy day, of merry forms I've seen. Upon the village green, sporting with my old dog train. Old dog train, ever faithful. Green cannot drive him away. He's gentle. He is kind, I'll never, never find a better friend than old Audrey. Wonderful duet. Of course, the fellow singing the words may not be much good, but the soprano is simply symphonic. 
I was just trying to bring rain. Well, that should bring a flood. You gonna help me eat this? Steve, <laughs> what did we hear? That? Just a song. Your song. How'd you know that? Well, I heard you making it up on your flute. Oh. Well, of all the... Why isn't your name on it? Cost of ink, I guess. Oh, well, here. Let's see how it sounds in print. All right. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for the sea. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun's so hot, I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I had a dream the other that night song when again. everything was still. I thought I saw Susanna coming down the hill. The buckwheat cake were in her mouth, the tear was in her eye. Says I, I'm coming from the south. Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. I've come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. I've come from Alabama with my banjo. This is the new one. Fine. The Camp Town ladies sing this song, do-da. Do-da. The Camp Town race track five miles long. Oh, the do-da day. I come down there with my hat caved in, do-da. Do-da. I go back home with a pocket full of tin. Oh, oh the do-da do -da day. day. Wine to an all night, wine to an all day. I'll bet my money on the bobtail night. Somebody bet on the bay. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's one you haven't even heard yet. Oh. It's called Jeannie's Own Polka. Mine? Now, there aren't any words to it. You have to dance to this one. All right. Toot the flute. <laughs> to tell you, I'm just broken-hearted over yes, the fact Yes, you seem to be. This is scandalous. Alone with a man, in his room. Go in the house straight off. Why? So you can be alone with a man who is... Don't be impudent. <laughs> Look, Inez, have you ever heard this? Did I ever hear? I'll play it for you. Stephen Foster, if you dare sound one note of that, that thing. You, you don't like it. I've had nothing else hammered into my head for a month. Some cheap minstrels even played it in the streets of Pittsburgh on ten bass drums. If I ever find out who wrote that thing, I declare I'll shoot him on sight. Look, look, Inez, I've written enough. I mean, I've been trying to write a song, only I want to write one to dedicate to you. A doubtful honor. What? I heard about all your romance. What romances? He's dedicated some kind of childish effusions to at least six other girls that I know of. Well, what if he did? He wrote one for me, too, and one for his dog. You and the dog were probably impressed. My ear happens to be trained to the classics. Classics, my foot. I think we better both go in. I'm going out and bite a mule. Right on the ankle. Oh, you make me disgusted. Did you see the way she looked at me? Like dirt under her feet. Don't be so downright mournful. Put the ring on her. The ring? Well, you saved enough for it. You told me you did. Yeah, I did, Jeannie, but, well, something happened to it. Well, then, you'll just have to propose about a ring. Come to the house tonight and make her say uncle, even if you have to shake it out of her. Oh, Jeannie. She wouldn't even see me. 
Oh, she will, if you ask her to sing something classic. On wings of song, my beloved, we two shall find our delight. There, mid sound of sweet music, we'll find our own world so bright. The sun of the world and moon, the song of the birds of the I swear, I swear you're better than Jenny Lynn ever thought of being. You really think so? Oh, I do, Inez, in spite of the poor accompaniment. It wasn't so bad, except in a few spots. Would you care to play at my recital? What recital? Tomorrow night. Quite informal, you know, for a very few intimate friends. Well, I hadn't supposed you'd care for oh, Inez, I'd gladly bust myself. I only wish I could accompany you. I was lying awake the other night. Do you know what I was thinking? Sure, I've not the slightest idea. Well, I thought, I've got about 50 years to live, darn it. And there's 365 nights in a year, and in 50 years, that's 18,250 nights. Now, however did you find that out? Well, I'm a bookkeeper. Oh, yes. And I thought that's 18,250 nights. I've got to lie awake in the dark, not knowing where she is or even if she's all right. Why, Steve, me? Then the next morning I thought, well, it isn't as bad as it was because there's only 18,249 nights left. I don't know how I'm going to do it, Inez. Do what, Steve? Get through all that long time trusting somebody else to take care of you. Maybe someday you won't have to. What? Maybe I... Oh, Inez, I'm the luckiest man on the river, I guess, and I'm going to make you the happiest girl in the world. You'll live on strawberries. I'm going to buy you the finest carriage with the highest step and team in town. Now? Now? Horses. <laughs> what in kind do you want horses for? You're not going anywhere. It turned out she thought I meant an engagement present. Why, do you realize what a horse has cost? Why, a rig like you're talking about would come to about a hundred dollars. Oh, my soul. And they eat all day long. They just stand there and eat constantly. I know. For that matter, she probably eats too, with eggs at seven cents a dozen. You just have to explain it to her. Oh, I couldn't do that. Well, then, how are you going to manage? I don't know. Strawberries. Hey, that's the James Bellinger you're pulling in the land. Your brother's back. Thank goodness. Maybe he'll buy that rig for you. <coughs> I think I always find some way. To... Mr. Howard. You and your dreaded song, oh, sir. Where's this from? Well, for goodness sakes. Why, this is wonderful. Wonderful? It's an outrage. Why, what's the matter, Mr. Young Howard? man, you swindled me into printing this song at great expense and in perfectly good faith. And now what happens? Eleven of my competitors, eleven, have brought out the same song. They shouldn't. Did you or did you not send this song to every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the publishing business? Why, yes, I guess I did, as many as I could think of. Don't you know who a song belongs to? To the first man to print it. Me. That's my property. And you have been giving away my property. Oh, Mr. Howard, I sure didn't go to. Nah, this irresponsible infringement has cost me thousands upon thousands of dollars. Is there anything I can do, Mr. Howard? Yes, you can pay up. Pay? But I haven't got any money. Oh, but your brother has. Does he want to see you on the chain gang? Well, I don't know. I... Tell him I'll settle for $1,000 by tomorrow noon, or I'll start criminal action. 
Mr. Howard, I can't ask my brother for that. He can get it back out of your pay in the course of time. Out of whose pay? Thousand dollars. Two hundred and fifty dollars a year. Four years. Provided you don't eat. That wedding's getting to be a speck in the distance. Looks like I better be a speck in the distance. Mr. Stephen C. Foster? Yes, sir. I am Edwin P. Christie. The great Christie? Thank you. Well, Mr. Christie, I, I can't tell you what a great honor it Are is. Are you to... the author of O Susanna, which you sent to me? Yes, sir. And I certainly appreciate your singing the song, Mr. Christie. My dear boy, is it possible you do not realize the damage that you have done to me? Sir? Or did you not subsequently send the same identical song to Jim Taunt of the Empire Minstrels? Why, yes, but I... And did you give Daddy Rice permission to feature O Susanna above his own jump Jim Crow? I guess I sent him a copy. You guess you sent him a copy? And also, Joe Murphy, Bill Roark, and M.J. Tishner of the Sable Harmonist. How many cork operas did you put this song in? I only knew the names of six or eight. Only six or eight? Look, Buster, are you trying to make me a laughing stock? Why, no, Mr. Christie, I only... I have sung O Susanna from Pittsburgh to New Orleans. Made it the most popular song in all history, perhaps. Actually, my very trademark. And you, you give it to every imitator I've got. Don't you know who this song belongs to? Sorry, Mr. Christie, I just didn't realize... Well, there's only one thing to do. You'll have to buy it back from them. Buy it? Yes, buy it back. A hundred apiece ought to handle most of those ham bones. Maybe 200 for Rice and Tishner. 800 plus 1,000, $250 a year. It comes to about seven years, between seven and eight. Still without eating. Oh, murderation. Hello, Freddy, Spike, Parker. Oh, welcome, welcome back. back. Hey, Hello, oh, Steve. Dunning, I thought you never would get back. Everything will be all right now. Come here, I want to show you something. See that? That James Millinger. Isn't she magnificent? I own her now. Made a small fortune hauling California gold seekers to St. Louis. Oh, that's wonderful, Dunning. I got your letter. Did you ask her yet? Yeah. What did she say? Well, it looks like I won the first heat. She said maybe. She may even announce it at her party tonight. Wonderful. Congratulations. I've stacked up, though, Dunning. It looks hopeless. Stacked up? Oh. What, what's hopeless? Dunning, I owe a fortune. <laughs> oh, is that all? How much can I help you with? Well, Howard wants a thousand. A thousand? A thousand what? Dollars? Who is this Howard? Well, he's a music publisher. See, I gave him this song, and now he says what that I... What song? What song? Who's this? Oh, Dunning, this is Mr. Edwin P. Christie, the big minstrel man. Oh, yes, I've heard of you. Naturally. But do you mean to tell me, sir, that you did not know that your own brother is the composer of O oh, Susanna? Who, this kid? The song of the century beyond any question. Well, say, maybe you better lend me a few thousand. Oh, I didn't get any money. And after I gave the song to Howard... Gave it? Well, not only that, but I sent it to some others and they printed it too. That's how I got in trouble. What trouble? What trouble do you expect when you give away things that don't belong to you? See, under the law, Mr. Howard owns the song because he printed it first. Is this true? There are two views. One is that the printer owns it. The other, the right one is that I own it, because I introduced it. But you admit Steve wrote it. What about his rights as the author? Hasn't any. Unheard of in this country. Well, we'll soon look into that. All precedent, sir, points to the... Then it's a gone precedent. I'm going to get this kid his money. I guess we'd better tell him about the minstrels I have to pay off. I uh, think we'd better let that rest for the moment. Why isn't his name on this sheet music? Did you ever announce him as the author? Why, no, it isn't customary. Well, that's going to be changed, too. I'm going to make his name a household word from one end of this country to the other. Oh, no, Dunning, no, you can't do that. I never throw a cat. Ah, what does she know about business? You're going to be the most famous shout songwriter in the world. Please don't say that, Dunning. All I want is for our nest. Steve, to... look, you're all gahunkled. Take the rest of the week and go fishing. I'll take care of things. You, come on in here. I want to talk to you. Certainly. Find yourself a girl that likes to live in jail. Howard said he's gonna send you there. I'll tell you right to your face, you old skin, please. You ought to be 
Lee Horsewhip from head of Pittsburgh and Bank. Calm yourself, Mr. Foster. Calm yourself. You have a complete misunderstanding of the whole matter. I've got a complete understanding of you. I came here to see that my kid brother gets a square deal. He had a square deal. All that's coming to him, considering. I gave him 50 copies of his song, didn't I? And they're going to give him $50 down on his royalty. $50? Are you crazy? Listen, either I get the $50 before I leave here, or I'll take a piece of your hide on the way out. Explain to this maniac. We don't give royalties to composers. Oh, I make it a principle never to interfere in private squabbles. Do I get the 50 or don't I? Well, it's, it's highway robbery. That's what it is. I want you to know that I'm doing this under protest. There, I'll, I'll give you $10 and not one cent more. I said 50. I, but this is an outrage. I'll have the law on you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when I've enjoyed anything so much. We've got to move fast now, Ed. Uh, better get the sign painter started first and tell Harry I sent you. Oh, I'll blink at Cincinnati. Uh, you'd better make them brush the throwaways. I'll fire it up. Oh, uh, what about those other songs? We can pick it up tonight. I ought to run out there and look in on that party anyhow. I want you to see how Steve lives. <laughs> Must have done something. She must have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our heads will be down in just a moment, so won't you all please be seated? <laughs> Why do you think you never saw that flute before? Oh, it isn't that, Jeannie, but... Oh, gosh, do you think she'll announce our engagement tonight? Oh, Steve, how should I know? I wonder where my brother is. You know, the way Inez feels about Christy, it'd be pretty awful if Dunning brought him in her just before she started. Oh, well, I saw to... your brother. He's with some tall, handsome, stuffed shirt in fancy clothes. Looks like the governor of Kentucky. Murderation, that is Christy. Why didn't I warn Dunning? Well, they shied off toward the stable. Oh, Inez will burn the house down, Jeannie. I better try and head him off. Here she comes. Too late. You're trapped. <laughs> number will be Lo, Hear the Gentle Lark with flute. Flute. You can just barely play the thing at all. Inez likes it. I'm still drenched from his last attempt to play it. Good thing we came up here to look for ourselves. At least four dead sure hits and ten top program songs to boot. I'll slow them under with these. Fifty dollars apiece. Absolutely exclusive. Only until publication. Steve, to get all royalties. All right. What's that squeaky noise? That's Inez. Oh. See how this will go for the number one spot. Brooklyn Dipper, he's a mighty fast boat with a mighty fast captain, too. He sits up there on the hurricane roof and he keeps his eye on the crew. I can't stay here for the work too hard. I'm bound to leave this town. I'll take my duds and take them on my back when the Glen Dipper comes down. Oh, for Louisiana, I'm bound to leave this town. I'll take my duds and put them on my back when the Glen Dipper comes down. No, hear my gentle lord. No, hear my gentle lord. Three, four. 
you call that squawky caterwauling up there? My advice to you is that you both run for your lives. <laughs> what a way to treat an audience. Audience? Hey, I'll show you how this stuff works. Well, wait a minute, does Steve know you're taking his music? My dear young lady, the whole world is about to know. at this time to bring you a most welcome surprise. You could hardly have expected here the most important musical event of the year, perhaps of our times, but that is your good fortune tonight. Isn't the discovery of genius the highest honor? Then what if I tell you that the newest, brightest talent of our day is right here in this very room? Unbelievably. I am told that only one or two of you are aware of the identity or even the existence of this genius in your midst. Unknown, uncelebrated, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the author of that most famous of all famous songs, the immortal O oh, Susanna. Oh! Your own great rising Stephen Foster. Oh. What? Oh, no, 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 folks, no, please, I just Give me your attention, no. please. How would you like to hear some of Steve Foster's latest, greatest music never before heard in public? Yes, no. Ladies, be seated. The premiere presentation of Stephen Foster's Nellie Bly. Nellie Bly, Nellie Bly, bring the broom along. We'll sweep the kitchen clean, my dear, and have a little song. Hook the wood, my lady love, and make the fire burn. And while I take the banjo down, just give the mush a turn. Inez, this is Milford. Are you in there? Why don't you answer me? Inez! Go away! Please let me talk to you. I don't want to see you or anybody else as long as I live. I only wanted to tell you how awful I feel about... Milford Wilson, if you don't go away and leave me alone, I'll never speak to you again. Much is made of corn. Honey, I must try and ask apologize. Fucking plenty love, a lion in the fire. You and your flute and your uncouth mother bank in there. Mr. Christie. I'll say goodnight, Mrs. McDowell. I told you I... Oh, you! I guess you have to know this, even if I never see you again. I didn't ask him to come here tonight or give him those songs or even know he was coming. I suppose you didn't even write them. Yes, I wrote them. All my life, I've heard music in every kind of sound there is. Even in things like... Squeaky wheels and faucets dripping. I can't help that, Inez. All I can do is promise to destroy the pages. All I have and never write one down again. Isn't it a little late for that, Steve? That's all I can do. If that isn't enough, I guess I don't blame you, Inez. Melinda, 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 
my sweet Melinda May. I could work in the field and be happy all the day. If you would only smile again, my sweet Melinda May. Lovely Melinda Surely that must be the last. It's only the ninth, Inez. Only the ninth? Seems more like 900. I could work in the field and be happy all the day. If you would only smile again, my sweet Melinda May. There, he stopped, finally. What's up his sleeve next to make the knife hideous? Shines bright on my old Kentucky home. This summer we're happy and gay. The corn tops ripe and the meadows in the bloom. While the birds make music all the day. The young folks. Kentucky home. You never lived in Kentucky. I'm sorry, I haven't heard of Kentucky. By my hard time comes a knocking at the door. And my old Kentucky home, good night. Weep no more. to keep applauding and encouraging him. They're out of their minds. All this racket did it. I know, as I promise you faithfully, I'll never let Christy or Trey or anybody ever sing one of my songs again. When I think I actually became engaged to, to the perpetrator of that wretched old Susanna, I could just die. Look, Inez, would you like to meet Jenny Lind? Jenny Lind? You surely don't know Jenny Lind. Well, once we were in Pittsburgh at the same time, Steve, of course I want to meet her. Well, I, I guess I could take you to see her anyway. Ma, do you suppose we could get Jenny Lynn to come to tea? No, not tea. A little supper after the concert. Just a very few people. Well, I certainly don't know why not. I think that would be very nice. Won't oh, it be exciting? And Inez can sing 22 numbers to Jenny. Jeannie? Maybe we can borrow Colonel Carter's chef and decorate the whole house with magnolias from Lexington. Sure, well, we're not all yokels in Cincinnati. Oh, I'm sure we could make the whole thing most attractive. Where are they? Did you get good ones? I got a box. Oh, oh. Steve, you shouldn't have. That's your salary for weeks. And this is my first step on the road to reform. Reform, Steve? I'm starting out to prove myself to Inez. From now on, I'm devoting myself to nothing but the classics. Won't that be a little bit dull? I think it's the most encouraging thing I ever heard him say. Hey, you fellows, watch out. Oh. Steve, what is that? I don't know. I never heard of... I mean, this must be somebody's idea of a joke. Well, here's one. It says the Greek... Don't, Jeannie, don't pay any attention to it. Why didn't you tell us? So, 
All your promises to me were just words. from St. Louis. They're lovely, Milton. So are you. Don't you want to wear one for me? Surprised? Took you a long time, didn't it? What did? Getting up steam. What's the matter? Oh, something dreadful has happened. Jeannie, what is it? You'll see. Come on. Are you sure, Inez? Sure? About what? About Steve. Very sure. Of course, a minstrel parade, with Steve's name on big, disgusting banners, and on handbills, and all over town. It was sickening. I only wish... Wish what? I wish there was some easy way to tell Steve. About us? Well, why don't you let me handle it? Would you, Milton? Tell Steve, I mean? I just did. out in, in the stable. We were just, I mean, we were just saying we wanted you to be the first to know. Oh? You must have seen it yourself. After this morning, there was no hope for us. The whole thing was pretty preposterous. I know. I'm sorry, Steve. I do wish the very best for you. That's nice. I mean, thanks, Inez. I feel as if all the lights in the world had just gone out. Well, there are plenty of candles in the kitchen. What? I didn't mean to joke about it. I'm sorry things didn't turn out, Steve. Truly sorry. You know that, don't you? There'll be plenty of lights in the world. For you, I mean. Beginning tonight at the gala Stephen Foster performance, Mr. Christie. Don't, Jeannie, don't. I can't even bear to think about it. Oh, but, Steve, there's no reason to feel that way now. You don't have to please her anymore. Hopeless thing, anyway, always was. Yes, I suppose it was. But don't you see one good thing about this? You're free to go ahead and make all the songs you want and enjoy them and be proud of them. I've always been so proud of them, Steve. The whole town's turning out for you tonight. Wait till you see how they applaud and applaud. I know they will. They'll stand up and cheer. All because of the songs that come out of that one little flute. Tonight you'll be famous. And tomorrow. And do you know what I think? I think it'll be forever. I think your songs will live always. Isn't there anything I can say to you? Steve, were you listening to me? Did you hear anything I said at all? Jeannie, you're sweet. Thanks. If only she could be like you. Time is 
never dreary if the folks they never grows. The ladies never weary with the rattle of the bones. Then come again, Susanna, by the gaslight of the moon. Will come the old piano when the banjo's out of tune. Ring, ring the banjo, I like that good old song. Come again, my true love, oh, where you been so long? Ring, ring the banjo, I like that good old song. Come again, my true love, oh, where you been so long? with an inscrupulous Miss Bone. Mr. Interoculus, I flatly refuse this to participate in idle discourse with the vicarious Mr. Tambo. And another thing... Just a minute, just a minute. These good people didn't pay to hear a performance of puny, puerile, pusillanimous persiflage. They came to hear me sing. Ladies and gentlemen, a brand new song written especially for me. With the able assistance of my congregation of golden-throated troubadours, my pearls of minstrelsy, and my feather-footed dancing ensemble, I offer you now Stephen Foster's Old Folks at Home. May I have a keynote, please? <laughs>
I'm going to look for Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, you will now have the distinct honor of hearing the greatest voice in the world singing, Come Where My Love Lies Dreaming. I now give you that golden throated meadowlark, Mr. Tambo, Rex Allen. Rex Allen? That's me. May I have a keynote, please? Thank you. Come where my love lies dreaming, dreaming the happy hours away. In visions bright redeeming the fleeting joys of day.
folks like to sigh. Some folks do, some folks do. Some folks long to die, but that's not me nor you. Long live the merry, merry heart that last my night and day. Like the queen of mirth, no matter what some folks say. Some folks like to smile, some folks do, some folks do. Others laugh through guile, but that's not me nor you. Long live the merry, merry heart that last my night and day. Like the queen of mirth, no matter what some folks say. Long live the merry, merry heart that last my night and day. Like this cold, some folks do, some folks do, they'll soon be dead and cold, but that's not me nor you. Long live the merry, merry heart, last my night and day, like the queen of earth, no matter what some folks say. Some folks get gray hair, some folks do, some folks do, brooding o'er their cares. But that's not me nor you. Long live the merry, merry heart that lasts my night and day. Like the queen of birth, no matter what some folks say. Some folks toil and save, some folks do, some folks do to buy themselves a grave. But that's not me nor you. Find him any place, Ed. Don't tell me he blew the show. Oh, Mr. Christie. Oh, oh, it's so wonderful meeting you in the flesh. I can understand that, madam. Didn't you find Steve? Neither hide nor hair. He's so smother and shy, he's probably afraid somebody might try to congratulate him. I can't get over how grown up you are, Jeannie. It must be Inez's dress. It was sweet of her to loan you her very best. Well, she doesn't know it yet. Uh, you know, I've admired you ever since I was a little bit of a girl. Remarkable memory. Uh, would you excuse me, my child? Child? I wonder where Steve is hiding. If he's hiding from a stunner like you, there must be really something wrong. If I didn't have a wife and two children back in Memphis, I'd woo you myself. Oh, thank you. Your show was wonderful. Thank you, honey. You're not actually anxious, are you, Dunning? Oh, no, of course not. You'll be home when you get there. Come on, I'll see you to your carriage. There, you see, Dunning was right. Steve is home. Oh, Steve! Jeannie, are you trying to raise the dead? Well, I'd just like to know if he's there. Well, that's no way to find out. I think I'll just run over there. I believe you most certainly will not. Jeannie, it's time you stop running to Steve's room. Now, you just try to simmer down and you'll get some sleep. I can hardly wait to tell Inez what she meant. 91, 92, 93, 94.
is this awful thing teasing my heart? My poor ears ring. It tears me apart. Spoiling my appetite. Driving me mad. Haunting my dreams at night. over after breakfast to see if Steve was all right and found this. Apparently started to pack, but never finished. Something interrupted him. Some frightful occurrence. Like the law catching up. Was he ever in trouble back in Pittsburgh? Certainly not. No sign of any message. Looks as if something simply landed in here and got him. One of my rivals, perhaps. Every sign of a struggle. If there was a struggle, it was in his mind. Nobody in the world would ever tear up Steve's music but Steve himself. This is mostly unfinished stuff. None of this is like Steve at all. He'd never do anything to worry anybody if he could help it. I covered all three landings, Mr. Foster. I'm quite sure he didn't sneak off. I mean, he didn't leave by any of the boats. Nothing new at police headquarters? Uh, no, Freddy's camping over there. Uh, what about bloodhounds, Mr. Foster? He's just carried away by a book some friend of his is writing. Uh, she calls it Uncle Tom's Cabin. Bad it's all about, uh, It's all about fugitive slaves uh, being chased by bloodhounds and such like. She won't sell a book. There isn't a bloodhound in Cincinnati. Uncle Bob's cabin. People won't pay a dime to see bloodhounds. They only want high-class stuff, like, like, well, for instance, myself, singing songs by Stephen Foster. Shall I start them dragging the river? Oh, no. You and Spike better go back to the office. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, Trey? Do you know where Steve is? Why don't you give old Trey a chance? Maybe he can find Steve. I'm willing to try anything, Jeannie, now. <sighs> There's been a boat here. Maybe he just took to the river. She was always dreaming about the South. He made all those songs about it without ever seeing it at all. Maybe he just went there. Wasn't Steve engaged to your sister? Yes, but... But what? Well, yesterday she told Steve she's going to marry Milford Wilson. You don't suppose he... Steve was pretty sensitive. He might do anything. I'll start them dragging the river. I want to have a talk with that sister of yours. But she won't see you. I want to know what you did to him. What I did? I want to know what you might have said to Steve that may have caused him to take his own life. Just a moment. Shut up. You jilted him, didn't you? You brushed aside the greatest musical genius of this day. Well, let me tell you this, Madam Macaroni. Steve is better off in the river, if that's where he is, than ever married to the likes of you. 
Better off in the... Oh, but you will find him, won't you? Huh. You bet we'll find him. If I have to pull apart every town from New Orleans to St. Paul. She saw me. Gee, what on earth are you up to? Ma, I wish you'd look. Lost something, sis? Ginny, what are you doing with your sister's things? I don't know what's got into her. This is absolutely the third raid in 24 hours. It's monotonous. I can't help it if you get all the clothes that ever come into the house. When I need something, I naturally have to steal. It's only because your sister's older and she had to have things to go away. Oh, of course. Everybody thinks only of Inez. And Inez thinks only of herself, so everybody's happy. Now, if there's something that you really need... I need a traveling dress. Traveling? I'm going on Dunning Steamboat. Oh, now, darling, we've been all through that. It was nice of Dunning to ask us to go on his boat, but I simply couldn't think of it. Well, I can. I can even think of stowing away. Such costly accommodations. As I explained to him, we simply couldn't accept. And anyway, when I remembered how hot it is in New Orleans this time of year, simply stifled. Well, then I'll be stifled. Because all I care about is finding Steve, and I'm going. I'll just bet. I am. I truly am. Well, I never. Ma, dear, could I talk to Jeannie alone for just a minute? Well, I, I guess so. I, I don't see why not. What's the matter, honey? Nothing's the matter with me. I can't say that for everybody around here. You're in love with Steve. Didn't you know that? What if I am? I wonder I didn't see it before. But you've been our baby for so long. Well, I was stupid, I guess. I'm right with you there. What? How in the world could you throw over a wonderful boy like Steve for that dreadful mullet head? Well, I don't know. Don't tell me you're changing your mind again. Oh, no. These things just happen, Jeannie. Nobody knows why or how. When Milford kisses me, I, I know something's happened. I know what you mean. Steve kissed you? Only a peck. But it's stuck. Oh, I understand. Oh, what's different with you? Because you don't care anything about him. He belongs to you, and I suppose he always will. But I have to know if he's all right. I'm so sorry, honey. Then don't get in my way. Dunning will cast off in less than an hour. He's going to hunt every inch of the rivers. I won't hinder you. I'll help you all I can. You really will? Of course. Take whatever you like. You're welcome to everything I have. Oh, I miss. Oh, we'll have to Here, you scamper down and tell Joe to harness the jeans. Oh, they're already harnessed. Good. Joe! Yes? Hurry down to the landing and tell Mr. Foster to hold the boat. Yes, ma'am. Yes. What about Ma? She'll be ready. Now let me fix your hair. Remember Ma's song about our hair? If you'd be a lady fair, wear a ribbon in your hair. Wear a ribbon in your dress as if a man you would snare. Should the color match my gown? Should I smile or should I frown? Should I play the bashful maiden or the queen in her crown? Now be still, stop your squirming. If you move, I might spoil it. Oh, I'm in such a flurry. Sister, please, hurry, hurry. Now a patch, now a curl, now a brush, now a pearl. Here we are. There, Jeannie. Oh, it's Steve's copybook. He put all his songs down in it. He may never write it his again. Listen, Ma. What that Steve's song, Old Black Joe? Christy tomorrow night. Promised to wait for me in Natchez. Maybe he has Steve with him now. You should have found out something. 
It's been ahead of us all the way. So maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow. How many times have we said that? Ah, come on, Jeannie. Let's not ponder and go down. Every place we've put in, there's been a hint of Steve. Doc Hand at Cairo singing one of his songs. A banjo at Memphis strumming another. Boys tin whistle at Vicksburg. And just now, that river man. Steve must have passed this way. So come on, Jeannie. Let's keep on hoping until we've seen Christy anyway, huh? Confound it, man. Everything lands here, even the rowboats. No way for anything to get by. He had a day start. Maybe he passed now just before you got here. In a rowboat, I rode the Cherokee Bell, passed everything on the river. Well, somehow I fell all along. We'd find him right here in Natchez, under the bluff. Well, yeah, that's Steve. Only the riffraff of the Mississippi winds up in this sinkhole. What about Natchez and the hill? I've combed every inch of it. He's just not here, Dunning. I don't believe he's on the river at all. But he has to be. He could be in New York, or on the upper river. Or maybe on a wagon train to California. Wait a minute. There. Did you hear it? Hear what? The flute. Steve's flute. My tune. The genie polka. Steve wrote it for me. Jeannie, how in the world did you get here? Never mind how I got here. How did you get here? Dunning even dragged the river. Somebody ought to break your leg. Sister, I'd be glad to. Oh, Jeannie, I've got to get you out of here. You'll get nobody, no place. Oh, come on, Steve. Don't pay any attention to him, buttercup. Take your hands off. Stop trying to break up the peace and quiet and Natchez. Oh, for Louisiana, I'm bound to leave this town. Take my duds and put them on my back when the Glendiver comes down. Oh, it's all right, Jeannie. Louisiana, I'm bound to leave this town. Take my duds and put them on my back when the Glendiver comes down. $50 advance royalty that I squeezed out of old man Howard. Thanks, Dunning. Honestly, Steve, I never saw such luck in my life. Neither did I. Well, as soon as you get dressed, we'll go out and find you a northbound boat. Well, there's no hurry about it, Dunning. No hurry? Look, Steve, this letter from New York from the music publishers. That came the day you disappeared. Yeah, I know. You told me. Well, don't you see what it says there? I've read it, Dunning. Well, you saw what they're offering you. Oh, sure. Oh, sure? A deal like this won't lie around loose forever, you know. Dunning, I... I sort of thought that I'd like to... Do you realize what you'd have made out of old Susanna with a contract like these people want? Why, it would have run into thousands of dollars. I suppose. What's the matter with you, Steve? You afraid you can't write any more songs? You can at least sell the ones that Christie's singing now. Oh, I'm full of songs, all right. Yeah, you're full of prunes, too, if you ask me. Suppose you only make up two songs a year. To guarantee you $500 a song, advance it as soon as you lay the darn tune on the line. You realize that's a cool thousand? Yeah, I know. 
and Christy pays you $50 a song for introducing them before publication, when I swear you ought to be paying him. Why, you'll send the sales up like a pilot when the boiler busts. Daddy, it's only that I... How many folks in this country can lay hold of $1,000 all in one year? Oh, I'll think about it, Dunning, sure enough. Oh, you will. Might even know by tomorrow. Well, I'll be chawed and spit overboard. I purely will. Of course, you realize you're going the wrong way. I am? Oh, away from New York, you mean? Well, certainly not New York. I mean Cincinnati. You know, if you had half as much gumption as you suddenly have income, you'd go back now and have a good big talk with Inez. I don't hardly believe. Well, she surely must have learned her lesson by now. It's a wonder to a hog she don't grab you this time fit to crack your neck. I guess maybe that's what I'm afraid of. What? Steve, you're still in love with her. Aren't you? You know, Jeannie, I was lying awake the other night. And you know what I was thinking about? Well, I thought, I've got about 50 more years to live, darn it. And there's 365 nights in every year. And in 50 years, that's 18,250 nights. I'll have to lie awake in the dark, not knowing where Jeannie is. Jeannie? Me? Uh-huh. And then I thought... Don't you dare break off now. I can't go on with it. You didn't mean it. I'm afraid I've said it before. Oh, I only made it up anyway. Only true part of it is, I do lie awake a lot now and nights. So do I, Steve. But mostly what I've thought about was that song I've been trying to write for so long. The one for Inez? Yeah. Now I know why it wouldn't come. Do you know what the matter was? I was trying to write it about Inez with the golden hair. But all the time, it should have been about Jeannie with the light brown hair. Steve. That's it. I dream of Jeannie with the light brown hair. Born like a vapor on the summer air. I see her 
dripping where the bright streams play. Happy as the daisies that dance on her way. Many were the wild notes her merry voice would pour. Many were the blithe birds that warbled them all. I dream of genie. Summer 